All right, guys, welcome back to the Art of Craftsmanship. My name is Dustin, and today we are filming our 10th video. Uh, we just want to say thank you guys so much so far. We were just about a year out of making our first video, and we're just short of 3,000 subscribers, so we really, you know, really appreciate that. If you are watching uh, and you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead. Uh, you know, you'll see more videos of this type of thing. Where we're making stuff in the shop. You know, we're really excited. Uh, excited to be here and excited for you guys to be watching. Um, we are doing our best to make videos that are produced fully, you know, a little bit longer. Just we want them to look nice and feel nice and have that kind of complete feel in the video. So, um, you know, as opposed to kind of breaking up into different parts. So we really like shooting it that way and we hope that you enjoy it that way. Um, drop us some comments, you know, tell us what you think about those type of videos. Uh, we always do want to hear your opinion on how the channel is going and if you, you know, what we can do to make it more accessible for you. So. Uh, today in the shop for our 10th video, we're going to be working on a Puko style carving knife. My father-in-law uh, asked me to make him a carving knife for his birthday, which is in a couple months. So uh, I got some birch bark from up at his property in Vermont. I'm going to do a birch bark stacked portion of the handle with uh, brass and wood. And, uh, and another thing I'm going to do today, which is kind of interesting and fun, new to me, is a little bit of forging on the blade. So I have absolutely no forging experience. I have you know, made lots of knives over the years, but it's all been stock removal um, and using my forge for heat treating. So today we're actually gonna heat it up. We're gonna bang a little bit on it and do some forging to kind of get that forge texture and also to draw out to a little bit more of a tapered end of the blade so that way we can get like a nice sharp point on the end of the blade for carving. Don't take anything I'm doing today as you know, a real how-to video on blacksmithing. It's just me having fun uh, showing you what I'm gonna do and hopefully we get something that works really well and looks really cool out of it. That's kind of the whole the whole end goal of the things I make in this channel, something that works well and the craftsmanship is good and it looks really nice at the end. So uh, so with that being said, let's go ahead and uh, we're gonna light up the forge. I'll show you, talk a little bit about my forge and kind of show you guys what I have here. So I made this specifically for heat treating knives, not necessarily for really heating up to forge temperature, but um, you can see what I've done. I just have a couple refractory bricks that I've used um, just as kind of doors in the front, shutters. That just helps to keep the heat inside. And what I did here is I just used a small bucket. Um, this, uh, this refractory here is a one-to-one -one mix, plaster of Paris and sand. And I just kind of used a, a form to be able to make this cavity. It's a four inch cavity plus um, a pipe on the side um, and just poured the concrete in around that. So this gives access into the side with the heat. Um, and it just kind of does like a swirling kind of cyclone forge inside there. And that really does heat up enough to, to kind of heat up small pieces of steel for the forge, which will work really well. Um, I am going to be building a bigger forge soon because I'm going to be doing some bigger knives. So stay tuned to that video. We'll definitely shoot something for you guys um, on that bigger forge. What I'm going to use today is this piece, which is actually from a file. You can see I've just cut it off and shaped it, giving me kind of that general shape of a blade that I want to start with. Um, you can see I also pull pieces like this from the larger part, so I can, sometimes I can make uh, two knives out of one file, so it works pretty well. If I have enough, like a nice long file, it'll be enough left over after I have cut off the blade and then I have some left over for smaller kind of carving knives. So that's what we're going to be using today. This one is pretty thick. So that's why I want to kind of add some of that forge material and also want to taper it down some so it's a little thinner in the tip. I'll probably be able to get another quarter of an inch or maybe up to half an inch out of it. Very good. So you can see I'm just really just working on trying to work a little bit just out to the tip to thin this out and draw the point out a little bit more. So I'm trying also not to 
work too much on the edges because that'll start to shape, it'll start shaping the blade and deforming it. If I actually put a taper on, it'll bring the blade back or forth. And that's what I would actually do if I was working on uh, forging out the bevels as well. But I'm really just trying to work on drawing the tip out and thin thinning it out as I go. And I think you can see that it's starting to get a little thinner. Keeping it straight. So you can see here that I've, I've kind of maintained the same shape I had, but just drew out the point some. So this, this blank here was the same size, the same length as this one. And you can see when I put them next to each other, you can see how much I've gained a quarter of an inch, maybe three eighths of an inch, maybe a little bit more. Um, but I've kept the, sign, the shape of the blade, which is what I wanted. So this is pretty close. You can see it still has a drop point. It still swoops up from the belly but I've gained a little bit more length and I've tapered in thickness down to the tip. It looks good. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna work on profiling the outer edge of this, this blade shape. Just clean that up and then also clean up the forge scale on the sides as well and kind of get it down to, you know, get it to the point where then we can start putting the bevels on it. All right guys, so looks like I'm to a point now where my bevels are pretty close. I've left maybe about a 30 seconds of an inch 
across most of the width of that edge. And just making sure my bevels come up about evenly on both sides, that the tip is even, and that the plunge lines are even. So I just uh, added a couple notches into the tang. That'll just help to give more grip inside the handle when I fill it with epoxy and put it in. It'll have nice and uh, plenty of notches to hold on to, add extra support inside. Um, just taper the tang all the way up, add the notches in, and then uh, we're ready to move on. So there are lots of kind of jigs that you can make or buy that will keep your filing nice and even and straight. And they work well, but um, you can also just do it by eye. It depends on you know how many knives you make and how often you're doing it and really if it's worth your you know money to get something that will make your time a little bit easier. So if you're making more knives, you want to invest in things that make that knife process a little quicker and easier. So I'm all finished now doing the Ricasso, making sure it's nice and even, so that way the bolster fits up on. So now we're gonna move into the hardening process. First thing we wanna do is we're gonna do normalizing. So what normalizing does is it brings the structure of the steel to a fine grain. And so what you do is we'll Put the knife into the forge, we'll heat it up to non-magnetic, to that critical temperature, and then we'll pull it out and we'll let it cool down to air cool again. Um, then we will put it back into the forge, heat it back up to a little bit higher, we'll let it sit in a little bit longer, a little bit higher the second time, pull it out a second time, let it cool down, and then we'll get it back into the forge for a third time bring it back up to that critical temperature, maybe just a little lower, and we'll pull it out the last time, and we'll let it cool down. And that will make sure that we have just a nice even grain that'll be ready for our final heat treat. We'll put it in the last time, heat it up to non-magnetic, we'll try to keep it at that state for a minute or so if we can, and we'll pull it out and do the quench. It looks like we got it nice and straight. It didn't, doesn't look like it warped any, which is good. So we're gonna go ahead and do our tempering cycles now. Uh, that'll bring the hardness down a little bit. We're gonna look for a dark straw color. So we're gonna do two cycles, 400 degrees in the oven for two hours, two times. All right, so we're now out of the oven and uh, all tempered up. The blade's a nice, even dark straw color all the way across where I ground off so I'd be able to see the color. So that just is the, the color you're aiming for, your temper, so that'll be a good hardness. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, move to the grinder again and do the finished grind on the blade.
just finished up with the 120 grit belt and this one uh as it smooths down it's kind of goes a little bit closer probably like to 200 so um i like the finish that it gives it it's a little bit of a just kind of a matte um it's a shiny finish but not super high gloss it's a nice kind of durable finish and so what i'm going to do now is i'll i'm going to take off the guard on the top of the grinder and i'm going to work against the uh the kind of the loose part of the belt where it's not against the back of the platen and what I'll do is I'll work with the bevel down. And so I'll actually be able to put a little bit of a convex grind on the very edge of the blade. So instead of putting a secondary bevel that's flat, I'm going to put a full convex grind. So it'll go from the flat of the blade to kind of a, a rounded tip instead of a perfectly flat tip, which will then just make that edge a little bit stronger. So you can see that now that you can see this wire edge, the little white line runs all the way from the tip back. I'm gonna put a, a choil here, a little notch out of it, so I'm not concerned about it not coming all the way back to the to the plunge line, but you can follow it all the way. You get a that little wire edge. So then what I'll do is I'll take that to a leather strop. Basically that's a little wire edge. You rock back and forth until it comes off and then you have your nice sharp edge. So we'll go ahead and do that and then we'll uh, prepare to move on to putting the handle on. All right, so our next step is we're gonna start preparing our birch bark. Uh, this is all birch bark that I collected from Vermont near where my in-laws live for my father-in-law since this is gonna be a birthday present for him. Um, so what you need to do when you're working with birch bark, you need to cut it into smaller pieces that you can stack, but also there's some preparation that you need to do. You have to clean off these, uh, the surface, you have to clean off so that way it's prepared for glue up. So I'll show you how to do that now. So after a few, uh, a few tries, um, I've really found that just using a knife and scraping the birch bark is the most effective way. Um, I gave it a shot on the wire wheel and it worked okay, but it was just a little too aggressive and it wanted to um, kind of catch on the bark and also just um, with the bark kind of being rounded, it was hard to get inside. So this, although it's not the fastest way, is really working pretty well. So I have a quarter inch uh, leather punch that I'm going to use. So I'm going to punch the pieces of birch with that and then I'll just overlap it about halfway and it'll give me just enough to fit the whole tang in. So Next thing we're gonna do is cut down a piece of brass. This is quarter inch brass. I'm gonna use this for the bolster. I picked a piece of black walnut for the handle. So this is already down to the right size. This is probably about an inch and a quarter by an inch and a quarter square. So I'll just cut off a piece of it to use. I think this will look really nice contrasting with the lightness of the uh, birch bark and the brass bolster. Draw an X across your wood from corner to corner and you'll find your exact center. Now 
The next part we're gonna do is we're gonna burn the tang uh, into the wooden handle. So you see I have the knife clamped here in the vise. I'll heat it up with the torch and then I have the hole that I drilled in my tang, I mean in my handle wood. So with, when this is heated up, I'll just push it on and burn the hole which will fit exactly into the wooden part of the handle. There we go, so you can see now it's a perfect size hole, burnt in perfectly so it fits exactly around the tank. This is 300 grit I'm gonna start at and then I have a piece of 600 that I'll finish off on. Two things I need to do before I glue everything up. One is I need to degrease all of my pieces, uh, all of my metal pieces. So the brass bolster and the knife, I use mineral spirits and clean them up so they don't have any grease on them. Um, and then I'm also going to be gluing this up with 30 minute epoxy. And because I have so many pieces of birch bark, um, I'm going to use a cup where normally I would just do a little bit on the surface. I'm gonna use this cup, I'll cut it in half and that way I have enough room to pour myself and mix up the right amount of glue right off the bat, so I don't have to keep going back and remixing it. When I filed the hole in this bolster down, I left it where I could slide it onto the tang almost to the end, but to the point where I knew that I'd be able to hammer it on the rest of the way, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now, and uh, then it'll fit really tight on that tang all the way up to the blade. I coat everything really well with epoxy. I can always clean up the squeeze out later rather than having holes in my final glue up. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take pieces of birch bark and we're gonna alternate. So start with one piece the grain going one direction, the next piece, the grain going the opposite direction. That just creates a more, uh, the, the pattern will be locked in and it'll be a stronger overall handle.
So I have about the amount of birch bark that I want, about three quarters of an inch. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this last bit. All right, I'm just gonna get, try to get a little bit inside the hole as well. Make sure I have some down in there that'll fill up any gaps. in so I have a clamp set up. Just grab a block of wood. I'm gonna let this sit overnight and cure completely. Uh, you want to go at least 24 hours anytime you're doing anything with epoxy. So I'll let this sit overnight and then uh, we'll come back and work on it tomorrow and start shaping the handle. All right, guys, so thanks for staying with us on this project. It's the next evening and we've let the handle and the glue set up all night long. Um, it's been a full 24 hours, so we're going to go ahead and pull it out of the clamp. We're going to cut off all the kind of extraneous bits on the bandsaw, trim it down with some more bandsaw work move to the grinder, shape it, and then we'll do some final hand work on it before we uh, finish up the plate.
The last thing to do is always the fun part at the end. We're gonna go ahead and dip this handle in the boiled linseed oil and get it nice and oiled up. Man, there's nothing like oiling up a handle. It just looks so beautiful. It is gorgeous, this walnut going into the birch bark. So dark to light and then into the, the brass. It just looks so nice. All right, guys. Man, this knife turned out really well. I'm super excited about it. Uh, it was a really fun project. Got to combine some stuff. I got to do some blacksmithing on the blade, which I've never done before, so that was my first time. Um, and also a birch bark stacked handle. That was the first time as well. I'm really excited to be able to do that. That birch bark came from the property up near my father-in-law's house. And because this is a gift for him, um, it's just a really cool element to have some, you know, part of the, the nature up near where he lives up in Vermont. So really enjoyed making this video. Really happy you guys are watching these videos. Um, this is our 10th video and we have more coming out in the next few months. We have some free time. We're really going to do some more videos, try to get them out for you. So go ahead and hit that thumbs up and give us a subscribe so you can follow along. Make sure you see when those videos are coming out and we'll see you guys on the next one.